distinguished guests, keynote speakers, esteemed researchers, and dear audience. Today is the very first day of three-day-long international conference on science and contemporary technologies, organized by Bangladesh University of Business and Technology, BUBT. The motto of the conference is Sustainable Development for Optimum Growth. In this conference, we received 363 papers from Australia, Bangladesh, Canada, China, Egypt, Germany, India, Indonesia, Japan, Korea, Malaysia, Russia, Saudi Arabia, South Korea, Thailand, United Arab Emirates, United Kingdom, United States of America, and Vietnam. Total, 225 reviewers having PhD have reviewed those papers blindly. And based on at least three reviewers' comments, we have accepted 124 papers for the presentation, which is about only 34% of total submission. There will be seven keynote sessions along with one invited guest speech in the conference. The conference is divided into different segments, including the inaugural ceremony, keynote session, technical session, closing ceremony with a cultural program. We regret that due to some urgent work of the chief guest of the inaugural ceremony, Dr. Pipumoni MP, Honorable Minister, Ministry of Education, Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, we are to shift the ceremony from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. However, we'll start now the first keynote session by Dr. Pumpat Sangudumla, Associate Professor of Bangkok University. I'd like to request session coordinator, Professor Dr. Anwar Hussain, to conduct the session. Thank you, Sabir Ahmed. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, respected authors, participants, session chairs, and keynote speakers. Welcome to the International Conference on Science and Contemporary Technologies, ICACT 2021, organized by Bangladesh University of Business and Technology, BUBT. I, Professor Dr. Mohammad Armar Hussain, Professor and Chairman, Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering, UBT. And I am the coordinator of today's first keynote session titled Multi-Carrier Modulation Techniques for Visible Light Communications. First of all, I would like to introduce the Honorable Session Chair, Professor Dr. Akshad M. Choudhury, who is currently working as the Dean of the School of Engineering at Brack University, Bangladesh. He has over 20 years of academic and industrial experiences in teaching, research, and academic administration. After completing his PhD at Georgia Institute of Technology, Professor Choudhury worked as a research fellow at the Optical Network Research Laboratory in the School of Electrical and Computer Engineering at Georgia Institute of Technology, USA. From 1999 to 2002, he worked as a research scientist in the Optical <coughs> Internet Working Research Division at Telcordia Technologies, previously known as Bell Communication Research, Red Bank, New Jersey, USA, where he was actively involved with DARPA <coughs> initiated next generation internet, optical level switching, and ATD, and managed project. Professor Choudhury is a co-inventor of 15 granted US patent and published more than 95 peer-reviewed journal and conference papers. He is an active reviewer of IT Pulley Photonic Technology Letters, Journal of Light Wave Technology, OSA Journal of Optical Communications and Networking. Now, I would like to request our honorable session chair to introduce the keynote speaker. And before conducting this session, I would like to mention that this keynote session will be continued from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. And within this one hour time, keynote speaker will get 40 minutes time and 20 minutes for discussion and photo session. Now, I would like to request our session chair to conduct this session. Sir, please. Thank you, Professor Dr. Mohammed Anwar Singh for your nice introduction. And thank you, BOBT, for giving me this opportunity to be session chair of this session. Uh, honorable keynote speaker, respected authors, participants, uh, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning and warm welcome to the International Conference on Science and 
Contemporary Technologies 2021, organized by the Bangladesh University of Business and Technology. It is my pleasure to serve as the session chair of this very first keynote session of this conference. The title of the keynote presentation is Multi-Career Modulation Techniques for Visible Light Communications. I'm very pleased to introduce our honorable keynote speaker of this session, Dr. Pombet uh, Shangu Dharmat, Associate Professor, Center of Research in Optoelectronics, Communication and Computational Systems from Bangkok University, Thailand. Dr. Pombet received his BS degree in electrical engineering from Princeton University in 1996. He received his MS degree in 1998 and PhD degree in 2002, both in electrical engineering and computer science from MIT. USA. 2003 to 2004, he served as a postdoctoral researcher at Laboratory for Information and Decision Systems at MIT USA. From January 2005 to April 2013, he served as an assistant professor and then later associate professor in telecommunications at Asian Institute of Technology, Thailand. Since May 2013, he has been serving as research scholar and Associate Professor in Telecommunication Engineering at the Center of Research in Optoelectronics, Communication and Computation Systems in Bangkok University, Thailand. Dr. Pompey's research interest includes multi-carrier communication systems and network optimization. In addition to basic research, he led several development projects whose aims are to create low-cost laboratory activities for the teaching of telecommunications in developing countries. Welcome to our keynote speaker, Dr. Pompey, to the session. Thank you. Dr. Fombri, you may start now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I think you can hear me, right? Hello? Yeah, can we can hear you. Can hear you. We can okay. hear you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let me start. Okay, good morning again, and thank you, uh, professors and uh, organizers, for the invitation. I'm happy to be here, uh, even though we have to do it online. Okay, so in Thailand, we usually go by our first name, so please call me Poon Pat. Today, I will talk about multi carrier modulation for visible light communication. Here's the outline of my talk. Uh, first, I will give some background on visible light communication, or VLC. Including some example applications, I will assume that you don't have any background on VLC, and I will try to explain the basics. Then I will talk about orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, which is the most common uh, multi-carrier modulation technique. The next topic will be what is called unipolar OSBM. Uh, which is a variant of OSBM that is compatible with VLC system. After that, an extension to multi-input, multi-output, or MIMO OSBM system will be discussed. And finally, an extension to multi-user system will be discussed. Okay, so let's start with the background. Uh, VLC typically utilizes light emitting diode or LED that with white light for both illumination and data transmission. In the picture, you can see that wherever there is illumination, there is a potential for data transmission as illustrated by the flow of data bits. Uh, we also rely on the fact that light intensity coming out of LED so, can be adjusted as far as- changing the slide? Sorry, just, uh, are you changing the slide because the slide is not changing here. Oh, slide not changing, just one moment. Maybe you have to share the whole screen, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Maybe you can share the whole screen. Yeah, yes, come in. it's fine. Yeah, now okay. you can see that. You yeah. can see slide number three now, yeah. right? Okay, thank you. Uh, so I was saying that uh, uh, so for VLC, LED support both illumination and data transmission. So whenever there is light, there is a potential for data transmission. Uh, light. Um, we have to rely on the fact that uh, light intensity coming up from LEDs can be adjusted very fast up to the order of 10 megahertz. And for communication engineers, we say that the modulation bandwidth is 10 megahertz. 
Meaning that we can expect to transmit 10 million different signal values in its spectrum. The most basic form of modulation is basically turning the LEDs on and off, on for bit one, off for bit zero. Uh, this simple technique is called on off zero. Uh, with such a high modulation bandwidth, light signaling is not an issue because human eyes cannot detect changes of light intensity if the changes happen at frequencies above a few hundred hertz. So if you turn the LED lamp on and off at a megahertz rate, there would be no problem with illumination. We will see that lights are on all the time. Okay, so now I'm taking slides. Uh, photodiodes can be used to detect optical power to create receive signal at a receiver. Alternatively, uh, cameras can be used to capture video images to create receive signal. Okay, however, if we talk about high speed data transmission, typically photodiodes are used. Uh, VLC has been investigated for about 20 years now. As of now, some prototype systems exist. For example, this picture shows VLC transceiver by Fraunhofer Institute in Germany. The back unit is similar to an access point for Wi Fi system that you can install on a ceiling. And the powerful unit has a little equipment that you can connect to your laptop computer via USB cable. So this unit can be used to set up a wireless local area network. Uh, since Wi-Fi is widely used for wireless local area network, it is worthwhile to compare VLC and Wi-Fi. Okay, first, VLC is different from Wi-Fi because light cannot penetrate opaque objects, such as concrete walls and wooden furniture. So as a result, VLC relies mainly on line of sight transmission. So if you have a VLC system set up in a living room, then you will need a separate system, a system in the kitchen to make a wall between the living room and your kitchen. Okay? So the use of VLC as an alternative to Wi-Fi is called Wi-Fi. Then light stands for light. This system has its advantage, okay, as listed in the table. To provide five advantages to include better signal coverage since line of sight uh, transmissions are not needed and more products are readily uh, uh, available, right? And also at reasonable cost. But uh, there are advantages of life by uh, as listed in the table. So it's better privacy for data transmission because uh, uh, if you're transmitting something in a room with the doors and windows closed, then people outside the room cannot disrupt uh, uh, your system. Okay, also, uh, Life 5 provides unlicensed spectrum with more bandwidth than the Wi Fi counterpart up to the order of 100 terahertz. No electromagnetic interference from Life 5 system, right? So you can expect to use the system in uh, uh, environments where you worry about uh, radio interference, such as in the uh, on the airplane or in a hospital. And finally, there are no cost components available uh, that you can put up together to uh, demonstrate uh, VLC. Okay, so as an alternative to Wi Fi, Wi Fi is uh, one example application of VLC. Uh, it is also regarded as a technology that should be integrated as part of the system. In the picture, you can see how a person receives data from his cellular network when he is outdoor. As he steps inside his home, his smartphone switches to Wi Fi. And then, as he steps into his office, his smartphone switches to Wi Fi. Another example involves interregular communication. Uh, imagine an ambulance transmitting a message from its silent, discontinued LED. A uh, traffic camera at an intersection can pick up the message. The controller can the message. And then transmit a warning from traffic light to the first car coming to the intersection. In the picture, the warning says, Fit me, uh, fit way to ambulance coming. After receiving the warning, the first car can then relay the warning to the car behind it and so on. So for such application, optical cameras are expected to be used. As receiver. This use of VLC is expected by many to appreciate 
the tension transportation system. Another application of DLC is for object identification. So as an example scenario, imagine a smart museum in which each LED lab and keep the ID number of the table below. So each museum visitor is given a handheld unit that contains a photo diode receiver. When a visitor stands in front of a painting, the handheld unit receives the painting ID and displays relevant information about the painting. Okay. So at our lab in Bangkok University, uh, we actually put together a low-cost demo of a painting concept uh, using Arduino Uno uh, with LCD screen as a handheld unit. So its painting ID is transmitted using binary power precision modulation of PPM. So I will share you a, a short video clip so that you have a clear picture. Okay, so imagine uh, uh, a smart machine visitor picking up a handheld unit. As he visits the first uh, uh, painting, then there is information about the painting coming uh, because the land is transmitting ID number of the painting. Okay, so when you move around, you can get the same information uh, depending on where you stand uh, in the museum. Okay, so I, I hope you get uh, the basic idea. Uh, let me now turn to talk about existing PLC standards. Okay. Um, back in 2011, uh, there is a standard from IEEE uh, for short range optical wireless communication, which includes DLC, as well as internet transmission. Uh, this standard utilizes single carrier modulation technique for data transmission, including on off screen, uh, variable pulse position modulation, and color shift screen. The maximum supported data rate is around 100 megabit per second. In 2018, a revision was finished, providing additional single channel modulation format that support optical camera communication. Uh, but the focus is more towards low to moderate data rate from uh, camera communication. Uh, uh, so the data rate uh, in the order of 1 bit per second to 100 kilobit per second. The IPUT 3.9991 standard came out in 2019. It focuses on high speed data transmission with a data rate uh, up to one gigabit per second. To support such a high data rate, water carrier modulation is adopted with autonomous frequency division of detection or OSDM uh, uh, as a chosen modulation format. Uh, but there are two options for OSDM. Uh, one is DT by optical OSDM or DTO OSDM. The other is a single frequency optical OSDM or ATO OSDM. I will explain the two techniques later on. So it is expected that this IPUT standard will lead the way to commercial lifestyle products capable of providing up to gigabit per second data rate. Uh, before I discuss the OSDM techniques for VLC, I want to give uh, some basics of OSDM. OSDM is currently used in a lot of communication systems. Cellular, Wi-Fi, WiMAX, DSL, digital TV, as well as VLC. So OSDM divides the frequency band of the transmission channel into N subchannels, which are also called subcarriers. The data are divided into multiple data streams to be transmitted in parallel at lower rates across different subchannels. Uh, this slide and the next will provide some intuition on the benefits of body carrier system. Whilst the data transmission, the transmission channel is typically frequency selective. The frequency response uh, uh, and that the channel, so the channel frequency response or the channel theme will vary across different frequencies, as shown in the top picture. If you transmit the pulse to such a channel, it will get signal distortion on the receiver because the uh, different frequency components of the pulse experience different channel things. So by dividing the frequency band into sub channels and transmitting multiple streams in parallel, 
The frequency response across this subchannel bandwidth is approximately flat, as shown in the bottom of the figure. Okay, roughly speaking, the signal transmitted on each subchannel will not be significantly distorted. The top two pictures show what happens to the transmitted power in a single carrier system. You can see that uh, signal distortion makes the received signal significantly differently from the transmitted signal. At the bottom two pictures show how signal distortion becomes much less significant if we transmit at lower rate with longer pulse period. Uh, even though we have signal distortion, the received signal looks still quite similar to the transmitted signal. Okay, so for OSPN, uh, imagine a sum of these slowly data signals over all subcarriers uh, is transmitted over the same channel. So in one OSPN single period, then QM symbols are transmitted. But instead of transmitting uh, the QM symbols directly, these symbols, which are denoted by capital S sub 0 to capital S sub n minus 1, uh, they are used to compute the symbol discrete through transfer or IDSP to obtain the signal values uh, denoted by small f uh, in this slide. Uh, we assume that the uh, IDSP and the discrete through transfer DSP uh, are done in a normalized fashion, which is often the case in communication theory. And IFSP and FSP are efficient algorithms for computing. IDSP and DSP. So since OSPM signal values are obtained from the inverse transform, uh, we view QAM symbols as being in the frequency domain and the signal values as being in the time domain. So an OSPM transmitter for each OSPM symbol, in QAM symbols go to the ISP to produce the OSPM signal values. These signal values are then transmitted together with what is called a psychic prefix, which is a copy of the end uh, uh, of these signal values uh, to the beginning to create a dark interval between consecutive earth and symbols to avoid inter symbol interference. The psychic prefix length, uh, denoted by NCP, after this L minus 1, where L is the length of the discrete time channel impulse is called. Okay. The group of psychic critics also supports simple implementation of equalization, uh, as I will describe next. The psychic critics result in circular convolution when the transmit work in signal goes through the channel. Uh, this psychic critics will move at the receiver. The received signal can be compared using the circular convolution between the channel impulse response, this is in, and the OSPM signal value S of N. And then uh, uh, we have this additive noise added, which is denoted by W sub N here. Okay. So note that the uh, uh, convolution, circular convolution in the pandemic becomes a uh, frequency uh, multiplication, right, in the frequency domain. So the uh, FP at the receiver, okay, which you uh, receive signal in the frequency domain, uh, uh, as capital R sub k equal to capital S sub k times capital S sub k plus capital W sub k. And capital S sub k is basically the sub carrier gain of the system. Okay. So with this form, uh, the QM signal S sub k, uh, capital S sub k, can be estimated using one tap equalization at the receiver. Uh, we simply divide the received symbols by the channel chain, capital S sub K, so that we get the original QM symbol, capital S sub K back, uh, together with some non additive. So this process is called one tap equalization, and it's considered uh, uh, efficient and simple implementation of equalization, and that makes OSPM attractive. Okay, so uh, uh, the signal processing step that a receiver summarized here. First, the psychic prefix is dropped. Then, uh, we perform HSP uh, of the received signal value, and then followed by one tap equalization. And then the estimate symbols are received. 
some example was in Sydney Valley of India, the top two uh, pictures show the real and imaginary part of 32 uh, Kirin symbols based on Kirin's constellation. The bottom two pictures show the real and imaginary part of the corresponding Kirin signal value. Uh, one thing that can be observed here is that the red signal has a wider range than the blue signal. This wider range is known to create the problem of high frequency error power ratio or high CAPR. Uh, this is one drawback of both being compared to single carrier regulation. Okay. So now we now turn to ask whether OSBN can be applied for VLC. Uh, the answer is yes, but with some modification to satisfy what is called the impolar constraint. Since LED are non coherent light sources, uh, they are used to perform intensive modulation or IM. In other words, different signal values are represented to variations of light intensity. At the receiver, Photodiodes are used to detect optical power, which will direct direct detection of EG. So with intensity modulation and direct detection, transmit signal values must be real and non-negative, uh, also called unipolar. So also to satisfy this unipolar constraint, it's called unipolar OSBA. So from the unipolar constraint, a unipolar OSBM signal must be number one real and number two or negative. The homogeneous symmetry of the conjugate symmetry condition can be used to make first beam signal real. You may recall that the frequency spectrum of a real signal has the complex conjugate symmetry. So since current symbols are considered in the frequency domain, if they have this homogeneous symmetry of the conjugate symmetry in the frequency domain, then its inverse transform will keep you a real signal in the time domain. Okay. However, the price to pay to apply this permission symmetry is a reduction for n to n over two minus one to n symbol to Ocean symbol. So you are able to transmit two symbol to Ocean symbol. So it's to mean to make Ocean signal not written because we now have real signal. Two well known techniques for unipolar OSBM. This is the one in the ITUT standard, uh, BTO OSBM and ACO OSBM. Both utilizes, uh, her meeting symmetry mentioned above. So let's look at them one by one. So for BTO OSBM, after applying the her meeting symmetry, a DC bias is added to raise all the signal values so that they become non-negative. If you denote the um, DC bias value by capital B, then the transmitted signal values are the original OSBM signal added by B, as shown uh, uh, in the first expression. Okay, so we see the receiver operates in the same fashion as normal OSBM, but two and symbols are received only on N minus uh, N over two minus one sub carrier. Okay, from so sub carrier number one to sub carrier in over two minus one. Note that the DC bias only affects sub carrier created to zero, which corresponds to the zero frequency that is not used to transmit any data. So here are some examples to zero OCM signal values for 32 sub carriers. The top two figures show real and imaginary parts of the symbol. That's why it's quite a homogeneous frequency condition. The middle two pictures are real and imaginary parts of OSBM signal value. Can easily observe that the OSBM signal values are now real because the imaginary parts are zero. The bottom picture show the DC OSBM signal value after addition of DC bias. So all the values are raised above zero to make the signal non negative. Okay. So how to see the DC bias value uh, uh, was investigated in one of our previous research papers, uh, but I won't go over the details today. Let's now turn to ACO OSBM. The technique was proposed by Armstrong and Lowry from Mona University of Australia back in 2006. So in ACO OSBM, 
in addition to a time that you need infinity, uh, there is a condition that only odd numbers of carriers, uh, subtraining number 1, 2, 5, and so on, up to n over 2 minus 1, are used to carry to a symbol. The remaining symbols on even numbers of carriers are set to zero. So uh, the price to pay for this is that now we only have been able to uh, in over four to in symbols to okay in symbols. Uh, after the IDFT, right, the inverse transform, uh, the signal values in the time domain uh, go to what is called negative clipping. That is, the negative values are clipped off, and the transmit signal values are what we need after negative clipping. At the receiver, uh, you, you can perform um, the signal processing step as before. But uh, it was proved mathematically that after you go through the receiver processing, then the receive symbol, uh, capital R sub K on sub K K, is now the original symbol, capital S sub K, but multiplied by one half times the sub K K, capital S sub K. Uh, intuitively, um, as a result of negative clipping, the signal component becomes weaker. Okay. So here are some example signal values with 32 subcarriers. Again, the top two pictures to uh, to a symbol. And you can observe that only odd number of subcarriers are used. Okay. The middle two pictures so we are an imaginary part of the signal value, and you can see that uh, the value, the signal are real, the imaginary, imaginary part is zero. The bottom picture is what you get after negative clipping, and this is what is transmitted as a zero signal. If you wonder why the information is lost due to negative clipping, you can observe from the real part of the signal. In the second row, okay, in the second row on the left, you can observe that the first half of the signal values are actually repeated uh, in the second half, but if the sign shifts, right? if it's positive, then it will become negative and, and vice versa. Okay, so uh, as a result, if you click uh, the negative part, you don't lose any information because the negative part actually appears on the other half. Okay, so uh, uh, as a result, you don't need any information with the negative clipping. So one needs to still to carry out just to compare uh, one tap equalization at the receiver referred to as post equalization and uh, the equalization at the transmitter referred to as pre equalization. Okay. Uh, the idea is if you know that uh, receive to a symbol, we have uh, half the can half the sub carry chain multiplied to it. So we can try to cancel this sub carry chain at the transmitter. So instead of transmitting uh, capital S sub K, which is the chain symbol, uh, we transmit capital S sub K divided by one half of the sub carry chain. Uh, so at the receiver, uh, what we get eventually is back to the original chain symbol plus some noise. Okay. So we did some uh, uh, investigation and uh, found that filtration can help improve the bit earlier performance when the error rate is in the order of 10 megabits per second or above. So this part showed the bit error as a function of the constant optical power. For the data rate of one megabit per second, there is no significant difference between pre and post utilization. But at 10 megabit per second, pre utilization outperforms okay, by achieving lower bit error rate. What about comparison between ACO OSDN and ACO OSDN? Uh, before comparing them, it is useful to mention what is called a signal dynamic range. The common assumption on signal clipping okay, uh, uh, for VLC is to have this signal value clip outside the range from some minimum value called S to some maximum value called S max. 
uh, as indicated in the equation. So if you below the minimum value, the signal is put to the minimum. So if you're above, then it is put to the maximum. So the, the, the result is always within this range. The difference between the max and the mean is called the dynamic range. The maximum uh, signal value corresponds to the maximum illumination level. And the minimum value corresponds to the minimum illumination level. And this data modulation, signal values are not constant. Right? If, you, if you transmit something constant, then you don't transmit any data. So with data modulation, the maximum and minimum illumination typically would correspond to the average signal value of something below its max and something above its mean to provide room for modulation of your data. For example, uh, uh, this step alpha right, that we use uh, can be 10% of the dynamic range. Given alpha or, or the, the modulation uh, room, right, for uh, illumination, even alpha is 10% of the dynamic range. Uh, DCO OSPN and ACO OSPN can be compared in terms of the big other way. So we investigated this comparison and found that ACO OSPN is more attractive at low illumination level, while DCO OSPN is more attractive at high illumination level. As indicated in the big other talk, as a function of the illumination percentage. In the plot, we see also another mean, right, called SIP OSPN. Uh, this is another technique that is also well known. However, SIP OSPN and ACO OSPN have similar performance, so I do not discuss SIP OSPN today. The Unicola OSPN can be extended to the case of multi input, multi output, or minor. The setup for minor VLC system is shown in the picture. Uh, multiple LED panels on the ceiling correspond to multiple input, uh, uh, in the input uh, to the channel. Okay. Multiple photodiodes at the receiver correspond to multiple outputs from the channel. So in this picture, we see a 4x4 four four minor VLC setup. To enhance the velocity of transmission channel, the optical axis of photodiode can also be tilted. Okay, so you can rotate uh, the photodiode unit at the receiver so that uh, they face different directions. In addition, you can uh, investigate different arrangement of LED panels on the studio to optimize signal coverage within the room. Uh, Mimo can be combined with OSPN for BLC. A uh, common technique is to apply singular value decomposition for SVB of the minor channel matrix to obtain decoding and combining matrices. I will not discuss the detail of SVB here. In the picture of the transmitter structure, we assume that uh, we have two spaces channels for two different things denoted by A and B on the left. In addition, we did assume that we have four by four minor systems. This path to a symbol are decoded using SVD decoding into four values for four LED panels. This set of values go to ISP to obtain OSPN signal for each LED panel. What changes the final step of having a DC bias for DC OSPN or the description of DC OSPN? But you can imagine that uh, we can perform such operations after adding the matrix matrix. This is the corresponding receiver structure. So basically, we employ the reverse of the transmitter structure, and uh, we set the estimate to a symbol uh, eventually. Okay. So in our investigation of unipolar minor OSPN, uh, uh, this is based on SIP OSPN, similar to AC OSPN. We explored different setups and found that the LED panel arrangement can have significant effect on the big area performance at different locations around the room. So the three-dimensional plots shown here are the big area levels at different room locations for so 4x4, 9x4, and 16x4 unipolar MIMO OCM setup for fixed total transmit power from LED panels. You can see that compared to four LED panels, 
meeting my LED panels uh, significantly increase the area of heat load generated, as indicated by a larger blue area. However, increasing from 9 to 16 LED panels does not help. Okay, so the number of LED panels can be optimized uh, for the big area performance. Another extension that I want to mention today is the extension for multi user transmission. The system shows a setup with four LED panels and two users is equal to four diodes. For each user, we have a four by two minor channel, right? So, uh, LED transmitters and two photo diodes. In such a scenario, it is possible to transmit data simultaneously to both users. So one typically is for multi-user minor OCM is to apply what is called block diagonalization or BD decoding and combining. Uh, BD decoding and combining are also based on similar value decomposition of minor channel matrices. And this device such that data transmission to different users do not interfere one another. So I, uh, but I will not discuss the details today. Uh, instead, I want I just want to show the transmitter structure uh, in the picture. There are two data streams for each user, right? Data stream A and B for user Y, stream C and B for user T. For each user, uh, each path to a single are decoded using the decoding, and then uh, the decoded single of the two users are found together. The set of signal values for each LED panel equal to I of T uh, with the size of species added. Not shown here again is the PC bias solution if you use ACO OSBN or negative description if you use ACO OSBN. The corresponding receiver structure is shown here and you can see that user 1 and user 2 they can separately receive the uh, data symbol okay? uh, by following the reverse process. Uh, of what is done at the transmitter. Decoding for multi user micro VLC system uh, was initially investigated for single carry modulation. So, in one research paper, we compare single and multi carry uh, multi user micro transmission uh, in terms of the bit early and saw that uh, single carry modulation using pulse amplitude modulation or PM. Uh, actually, it's more attractive at low bit uh, at low bit rate, but uh, multi carry modulation based on SDN becomes more attractive at high bit rate. Uh, 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 in this example, we saw that at 50 megabit per second, uh, SDN is more attractive uh, to uh, hit low bit errors compared to single carry modulation. Okay. So let me finish. Uh, by describing our ongoing investigation in multi user minor OSPN for VLC system. First, we realized that the uh, DD decoding is limited to scenario where the total number of photo diodes is less than or equal to the number of LED panels. For example, if you have four LED panels in the room, so that's red dot in the picture. Okay, so this picture is a uh, it's a top nine view of the room. So we have four LED panels at these four red dots. And uh, uh, we have four users whose location are shown with digits one to four in the picture. We put two photo diodes at each user. We can transmit data simultaneously to have more two users. Since the total number of photo diodes will become four. So for two users, four photo diodes. If two users are considered, then the total number of photo diodes will become six, which exceeds the number of LED panels, which is four, and the decoding will not be applicable. So we need to install multiplexing for data transmission uh, by dividing users into groups of two users. The question is whether specific grouping has significant effects on the transmission performance. So to preliminary investigation, we found that it does. Okay, in this example, uh, we consider a possible grouping of two users to group as shown in the right table. We found that the optimal grouping can provide 
if not to tell me how to let it go, that's nothing to do, compared to the worst case picture. It is the first step, it is worthwhile. So to consider this a good thing, and to perform some optimization, if there are a lot of users in the same room, and you have to take them to some kind of uh, multiplication, uh, so then it has to be often. So, in summary, I have gone over the following topics today. First, I provided some background on VLC and its application scenario. Then, I pointed out existing VLC standards with single carrier and multi carrier modulations in power. Then, I discussed unit color OCA that is compatible with intensity modulation and network detection for VLC systems. DCO OCM and ATO OCM, which are adopted in the ICUT standard way. Next. And then finally, I'll discuss some extension to the minor case and the multi user system. Uh, along the way, I'll also point out some investigations that we did in our research. So uh, I hope that you get some useful information from this talk. And uh, I think there is time for questions. So I welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we had a very good uh, presentation from Professor Pompet. So the floor is now open. We are going to have a, our uh, inauguration session at uh, 12 noon, I guess. So we have time for at least one or two questions uh, before the photo session, as I was uh, informed. So uh, the floor is open for a question from the audience. You, you can type it or you can just raise your hand and you can just start. Uh, let me see. OK. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Hello? Hello? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. There's so can a, I ask? Uh, can I ask a question or comments? Sure, sure, yeah, please. Okay, okay. Thank, uh, thanks, sir, for your nice uh, and timely topics, I think, because last couple of years, there are lots of research in this area, uh, visible light communication and optical or less scenario. And topics is more interesting for me because uh, during my PhD, I had a chance to work in this area. And we demonstrate uh, 3.2 gigabit per second multi wavelength approach, and it was recorded in that time in 2011. So I have a, just a few I need some comments. Like uh, most of the uh, demonstration up to now is uh, line of sight basis, but uh, I think uh, non line of sight is also a critical issue for VLC uh, case. And another question is. Uh, whenever we consider outdoor environment, I think ambient light is a uh, is a critical case in this VLC scenario, especially vehicle to vehicle communication. So, how to handle these two uh, critical things? One is non line of sight approach, another is ambient light in outdoor environment. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, um, I'd like to. Maybe compare this VLC with uh, uh, what is going on also in many network communication, right? Because you see that have uh, a proxy system also use many network, and there are also uh, similar uh, properties, right? That many network, if you don't have line of sight, the signal becomes weaker, right? So uh, uh, if we follow what the companies have done to help. Uh, it seems that they are on the activity to create like a receptor, right? Receptor equipment or even signal relay units in order to, you know, create additional, you can say additional line of sight if you want, but instead of one line of sight, there are alternative line of sight, right? Uh, that seems to be on the activity uh, in that. Uh, I would not be surprised if the, the idea would extend to the LC system as well. Uh, regarding the outdoor, uh, yes, yes, the um, ambient light will be a problem, right? But uh, I have to admit that I did not uh, look into the outdoor uh, scenarios very much. But I imagine that uh, if we compare to physical objects, right? We see there's some kind of diversity that people are used, uh, people use in order to help, you know, create 
uh, uh, make the signal stronger, right? So uh, you mentioned some kind of diversity that you install uh, multiple uh, uh, panels and multiple photo diodes, and hopefully to some kind of informing you can increase the signal to noise very further. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you so much. Is there any other uh, question from the participants? May anyone just unmute and can ask the question? I have a very quick uh, query. Basically, you are using point-to-point uh, -point, uh, visible light communication. Uh, in terms of bandwidth uh, bitrate performance, what is your uh, accomplishment? Because if you want to use an application like point-to-point uh, -point download or something like that, uh, you'd like to increase your bandwidth, uh, transmission bandwidth as well. So in terms of bits per seconds, yeah. So the second, uh, uh, the IPv2 standard uh, providing up to one gigabit per second, but we uh, 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 line of sight, of course. I, I see, okay. So that's, uh, that's the kind of uh, uh, transmission details we are aiming for. I see. And, and you, the, 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 the prototype system is done by the one house and still going to be able to provide that. Okay, I see. Yeah. All right. So the other question is uh, you know, uh, since you are, uh, your application is very um, targeted, so in terms of computational complexity, because you need a uh, uh, number of transmitter receiver in each of the devices, as, I mean, in terms of transceiver you're designing. So do you have any thought about the power consumption issue? Uh, well, I mean, the multiple techniques like OPM, mm -hmm. right, uh, 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 becoming, you know, feeling quite mature. So uh, I see. I like that uh, to perform uh, this uh, SSD and uh, I think there are also uh, at home in trying to move most of the computation uh, to the, let's say, the, the access point unit, right? If you have an nice. access point, it is powered, so uh, some of the computation can be moved uh, to the access point with power of the power. So uh, uh, that still that is true, that, uh, uh, you know, the computational needed is somewhat in balance. You need nice. more computation, then you have power supply, and you need much fewer. I see. I see. Okay. That, that, that kind of approach uh, can be can be investigated. Okay. Thank you so much. So I think we are very much uh, on time with our schedule. Uh, before going to take a photo session, I just want to um, say basically thanks to our esteemed speaker, Dr. Pompet, for your time and be part of this conference. I'd like to also thank you to all the ladies and gentlemen who participated this session, uh, the very first session of this conference. Uh, I must um, thank our session coordinator, Professor Dr. M. Danwar Hussain, and also his team, uh, Shoji Bishash and Ariful Islam, and other volunteers for pro providing the technical support to this session. So with that, I'd like to hand over to Dr. Anwar just for photo session part.